Hey everybody, happy Friday. It's time for Facebook Friday. I hope you've had a great week. Um, I've got some beautiful things to show you today. Um, today's projects are gonna take a little while. I've done, <laughs> they all involve a lot of coloring. So I've done some of it ahead of time to hopefully not be on here for two hours today. Um, but I'm gonna try to kind of rush through the beginning, maybe get started a little bit earlier than normal. Um, I see you guys jumping on, good. Okay, let's make sure I am in the right spot, right? Okay, let me make sure the volume is down. I can see your comments. So many things to do. Okay, so this week, Fond of Autumn. This was not my originally planned um, product, but I don't know, something weird is happening. There's a ton of stuff um, on back order or unorderable right now, which is not weird, but things are like, going on low inventory, unorderable, and then jumping off. And then usually they're on there for a while. I don't know, I can't keep up. So I don't know what we're doing. Usually I have it all planned out, but I had to, to jump this week and design something that was in stock. Um, we were gonna do the, the bewitching bundle. Maybe we'll get that in before Halloween, but I don't know. Um, anyway, <laughs> long story short, this is what we're doing. And I have no idea what we're doing next week because what I had planned I saw is now on low inventory. So who knows? Okay, um, welcome if you've never been to Facebook Friday before. We, I have a few announcements I'll run through and then we'll make some projects. Uh, we'll make three projects. Hi guys, good to see you. Um, Denise, the house building is going. Um, no, <laughs> well actually, yes, actually there are two mortgages happening right now, fun times. Um, they have broken ground, they have cleared the lot. Well, a big section of the lot. They've put in the form boards and they've started bringing in the base. I don't really know all that. I just know those terms from my husband, but you guys probably know what I'm talking about. Um, now they have to do the plumbing and all that before they pour the foundation. So we're at the very beginning stages. We think um, probably 10 months on the quick side. Who knows? We'll see. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so it is a new month since I saw you last, so I have some new things to show you. This month's All Star Tutorial Bundle features Rustic Harvest. We usually stick to the annual catalog products, but uh, this month we are using the Rustic Harvest. I love, love, love this bundle. And you know what? This came back in stock, didn't it? Maybe we'll do this next week. I don't know. We'll see. Rustic Harvest, it's back in stock, I believe. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I know you guys will. Um, but regardless, this is the all-star tutorial PDF this month. There are 12 tutorials in here designed by 12 different designers. They're all video tutorials. Um, you can earn it for free by spending $50 online with me. I mail them, email them out about once a week. Um, mine this month um, is a little slider treat box. And um, you can earn this. I said that getting it for free. It's also available in my PDF store. I meant to say that too for $15. All the pro uh, projects feature the Rustic Harvest bundle. They're all different. Um, they're all gorgeous. You really need to check them out. Um, so anyways, that is that. I have been really behind mailing the, emailing these out. If you get tired of waiting on me, send me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, it's a thank you to those of you who order from me. Um, and if you are a demonstrator or you have a demonstrator and you're not going to order from me, like I said, it's available in my PDF store. Each project has a link where you can go watch the video. The measurements are listed in uh, metric and imperial as well. So wherever you live in the world, the measurements are there for you. Okay, um, you know what? I'm just gonna flip you guys around. That'll be the easy thing. Hopefully I can do that. Let's see if it works. There we go. Alrighty. Next up, let's look at the class to go that I have right now. Oh, don't let me forget. Um, let me see. I'm gonna forget to tell you guys this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with that. Hold on, let's see. What can I show you? Okay, let me show you this because I don't have this written down anywhere. My holiday retreat to go will be, registration will open on Tuesday. I have teamed up, uh oh I've teamed up with my downline, Deborah, this year. We've designed the projects together. There are a ton of projects and they all feature this Santa's delivery uh, suite of products. Um, so registration will open on Tuesday and I will send it out only 
through email on Tuesday. You've got to be subscribed to my email list to get it. And then I will open it up to the public on Thursday. That's Deborah and I have made that agreement and that's how we're both going to do it. Um, so if you want to sign up for my holiday retreat to go, make sure that you are on my email list. I will add the link here at the on the video. Um, when I'm done, you can also go to my blog, scroll down on the right. There's a place where you can subscribe to my email list. Um, these sell out every year. So if you want to get in on it, make sure that you are on my email list. I will send it out Tuesday morning around 9 a.m. Central. If you don't get it and you're waiting for it, send me an email. Check your spam first and then check your email. I mean, then email me. Um, the, all the projects will feature Santa's delivery. You'll get a whole bunch of products in there. And um, there's gonna be fun pillow gifts and there are gonna be two add-on classes. All those details are coming out Tuesday. I am gonna be again out of town on Monday. So if you email me on Monday, I won't be able to answer. But Tuesday, when I get back in, that's the first thing I'm gonna do is send that email and open up registration, okay? Be patient with me. I pro it won't sell out the first day, I promise. You'll have a day or two. <laughs> um, but just be patient with me, okay? All right, so that's that. I was I was afraid I was going to forget to tell you guys that. Um, that will be mailing out the week of Thanksgiving, okay? So we've got a long way to go for that. I just wanted to make sure I told you. Um, this month's class to go features the Kindest Gnomes bundle. Um, there are, I can't remember now, six cards. Man, I have done so much this week. My brain is mush. Um, six cards. Um, the deadline for this is, I have no idea. My note is gone. I think it's October 21st. So you've got, you've got a while. Um, it, you can get it with the bundle, without the bundle. You can get PDF only. Um, and my downline gets the, this kit at a discount. Um, if we do the holiday retreat to go, does that count towards free rustic harvest tutorial, Lori? Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, that would for sure. All right. So there's that. Um, I send this out in every email that I, uh, send out to my email list. The link for this is always there. I can't list it on social media or on my blog per stamping up policy. So if you want that registration link and you don't have it, just shoot me an email and ask me for that link. And the details are listed on my blog. If you scroll down at the bottom of today's post, there's a link there. Um, today's the last day for the subscription period for October's Club Create. Um, there's no more spots left. I just want to let you guys know. Those of you that are in the club, um, this will be what I'm doing next week, prepping this, ordering everything that you guys have ordered. Um, those of you who are earned your rewards this month, um, I will be reaching out to you. Um, hopefully you filled out the form. Remember on your sixth month, I send you an email to, to let me know what you want to order with your Stampin' Rewards or your Club Create Rewards. Um, but anyway, the PDF for this, if you want to make this, is available in my PDF store. It'll be there forever. Uh, it, it will never go away. But here is the next month's Club Create kit. This subscription period starts tomorrow. Um, and it features the Sweet Candy Cane bundle. I had a lot of fun with this one. Um, I did not think I was even going to use this suite of products. One of you emailed me, I remember in the beginning and said, are you going to use that for a class? And I said, no, <laughs> I changed my mind because so many of you were asking about it. And then I just kept seeing some cute stuff. So this is Club Create for November. My gosh, November. Um, subscription period opens tomorrow. The PDF with a video is available in my PDF store right now. If that's what you want, if you're not a club member, but you want the PDF, you can click the shop tab at the top of my blog blog. And the drop down will say PDF store. All right. Okay, so that's that. Uh, paper pumpkins, this month's paper pumpkin. I have a couple extra if you need them. Please email me. They're very cute. They are paper, they are Halloween. Okay, I did that fast. I think I covered everything. Oh no, I did not. I forgot, forgot. Um, so I guess I should show you guys this. Um did you guys do World Card Making Day? If you did, it was fun. It was awesome. If you didn't, you can still go back and watch it, which is what I did because I wasn't home on Saturday. Um, they announced a free shipping day, which we had on Tuesday, right? They also showed some new product, which I actually have. I'll show you. Um, 
this product actually isn't orderable for customers, only demonstrators right now, but you, if you buy a starter kit, you can actually order it. Um, I ordered the paper and they didn't send it. It was missing from my box and that was the best part of all of it. But anyway, there's this whole suite, really cute. It's got gingham in it, so you guys know I love it. Um, this stuff will be available next month for everybody. So be on the lookout for that. You know I'll be using it. But if you're interested in the starter kit, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you. And I didn't even put it on the PDF. I ran out of room. This month's starter kit, um, this month's starter kit is $155 in product um, for only $99. I'm going to show you guys real quick, um, which is awesome. And it's free shipping, always free shipping on the, um, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this, um, always free shipping on that starter kit. So $99 plus tax, you get $155 of product of your choice. If you want details on that, go to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, click this right here, join. And then you can scroll down and read all the details about the starter kit. Um, not only do you then earn a 20% discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, um, you get to be in my on my team. They get my PDFs for free. They get my class kits at a discount, plus a slew of other things. Um, you don't have to be a business builder to join my team. If you are what we call a happy shopper, a hobbyist, you are welcome as well. Um, anyway, scroll down, read all of it. Let me know what you think. If you're ready to buy that starter kit, there's a link down here right at the bottom. Okay. Um, so this month's a great starter kit promotion, $155 in product. Um, and it's usually $125. So you've got a lot of, of product for just $99. All right, I'm glad I remembered to tell you that. Okay, moving on, prizes from last week. Peggy McDermott, you are the winner from of the Warm Welcome. This is one of the bundles they featured in our World Card Making Day event. Um, we, I'm having a team event tomorrow, a big team event, and we are using this, uh, making some super cute things. Um, we'll use this in a Facebook Friday soon. I don't know when, but soon. Um, it's so cute. This is an early release from Next Spring's catalog. Um, Peggy, you're the winner. So Peggy, I think I have your, your mailing address, but it's been a long time. So if you'll message me, make sure I have the right mailing address. Peggy won because she shared um, the video on Facebook. Um, that's all you have to do to win. I just pick a random winner every week. This week, I'm going to give away the Splendid Thoughts Bundle. Um, so if you would like to win, make sure you share and write in the comments that you shared, all right? All right, now we are there, we're ready. If you have not already, go over to pinkbuckaroo.com. There's a free PDF for you. And I did not change that date right there. Um, every week I make three projects with one um, product. This week it's the Fond of Autumn Bundle. Um, if you want the make and takes for free, I will send them to you if you place an order between now and Monday at midnight. Minimum order is $35 and you have to use the host code. Um, and then next week I'll mail them to you. They're probably going to go out a day or two late next week because I'm going to be out of the office on Monday, which means everything I have to do on Monday, I'll do on Tuesday, which, you know, and so on. So anyway, they look like this. I send you everything you need, but the stamped images and the dies in this bundle, as well as you'll need the stitched rectangle dies for this week's projects. But everything else is there for you. Um, uh, any embellishments, paper, DSP, whatever. And then I make you a little thank you tag. I don't do any stamping. Um, the cutoff for that is Monday at midnight. So if you would like those, make sure you put in an order sometime between now and then. The host code is right here. It's on my blog. It's right here. This date is wrong. It says October 3rd and it should say October 10th. Okay, I think that's it. We're ready. The blog post is up, right? The PDF. You guys check the PDF. See if it's working. All right, let's get started. So our first card, um, we're gonna do some coloring. And I've got all my blends here. We're gonna use a little bit of Wink of Stella. Um, this is a large coloring image. So what I've decided, I have pre-recorded videos for these um, where you can zoom in real close and see the coloring and do all that. I'm gonna try to, uh-oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. Darn it, hold on. Oh, did it zoom in? It did zoom in, didn't it? Um, sometimes something pops up when I do that. Um, I'm just going to do partial coloring for Facebook Live today. Otherwise, we're going to be here a really long time, okay? 
Um, but if you want to see close-up coloring and details of how um, I'm coloring and stuff, make sure you go watch those clean recordings um, later and you'll be able to see that. Okay, so our first card, I love orange and blue together. They are opposite on the color wheel, so they're beautiful together. I always love it. So for some reason, I had the idea of using a blue background with some fall-colored um, flowers. And that's what I came up with. Now I had my stamper out. Is here it is. This is a big image, like I mentioned. It, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you a couple of different um, options as well for cutting it out. I'm trying to find my supplies. Hello, they're all under here. Of course they are. The things I need first are always on the bottom. That's that's how I'm very efficient in my work. <laughs> I just do things the hard way. There we go. Um, okay, so the first image, the first card that we're going to do um, is going to be, we're going to use Stampin' Blends, you know, my favorite, Stampin' Blends, all right? I'm going to use a Stamparatus because this is a big image, and I have found, and especially with a photopolymer, the bigger images, sometimes I can't get it to stamp right. You know, you have to use two hands with a big block, so the Stamparatus really is just the best option for sure. So I'm going to ink it up in Memento Black, lay it down on a piece of basic white, and then check it, did it, yep. I mean, it did It did really well, but if it had it, I could re-ink it and set it back down and um, stamp it, you know, where I needed to fill in those colors, but it did good. Now you'll notice mine is stained black, it's not clear anymore. That's because on the next project, we're using stays on. And stays on will stay on your stamps. Uh, see what I did there? Made a little joke. No, it stains your stamps. It's fine. It doesn't bother me. Um, but if it bothers you, there is stays on cleaner that you can get. I don't like the way it reacts with photopolymer. So I just leave it. It doesn't bother me. I don't know. Does it bother you guys, the staining? It doesn't bother me. All right, first up, let's color our flowers. Let me turn it, mm, okay, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna start with pumpkin pie. Now, if you guys look online, you will see these flowers colored in every color under the rainbow. A lot of people have been coloring them, and I did not mean to do this. What color is this? Oh, it's really dark, light pumpkin pie, woo. I opened new markers this week, and they're all, way darker because my other ones were so like running out but that's right that's what i meant to use but anyways if you look online you'll see people using all kinds of colors to make these look like spring flowers too so not just fall so i'm adding in a little bit of dark um and then i'll take my light and just kind of blend it out all right so we're going to do two flowers that way let's do the bigger one too um and then we'll do one with pale papaya. Okay. I also, there's these little dots around the center that I kind of like to color in with a darker color. All right, there's that. And then pale papaya, see how much lighter it is? That's kind of what my light pumpkin pie was looking like <laughs> that's why when I started coloring with that I was like whoa that's the way it's supposed to look I had just forgotten all right for the leaves I'm doing some old olive and some granny apple green and these are real e easy I'm just going to color them in with light old olive and I am using the bullet end of my um, marker. I just, by with preference, that's just what I prefer. I have better control that way. Um, I'm adding a little bit of dark there, kind of on the bottom section of each leaf, like that. And then blending, whoops, I didn't want that brush end. The brush end, for one, it gets kind of, it loses its shape the more you use it. And then I, I feel like it gets sloppy. I'm, I'm gonna blame the marker and I'm not gonna blame me. <laughs> One of us gets sloppy, it's either me or the marker. 
Um, but I, I get out of the lines a lot more with that brush in. So I really prefer to use the, boy, it looks like my old olive needs to be replaced too. Tomorrow, I'm having a big team event here in San Antonio and I have all new Stampin' Blends. So I did not wanna open them until tomorrow. I did open the pumpkin pie one though. All right, now for this one, I'm gonna take the dark and I'm just gonna kind of outline those veins like that. And then I'm gonna go back. Definitely the marker, Kimberly, I agree, I agree. Hi Polly, glad you're here, welcome. So is it autumn where you guys are? Is it, are the leaves turning colors? I bet it is. We don't really get color until late November. All right, so I would do all the other leaves. I did some of them here in Granny Apple like this, just to give us some variation. Okay, a little dark. For our um, acorns, I'm gonna color the bottoms in light. Um, why can't I remember the name? Crumb cake, light crumb cake. And then I'm gonna take my dark crumb cake. I'm gonna add a little bit of dark there where those lines are, where the artist kind of shows us where the shading should be. And a little bit under the little, the little cat part, okay? Then I'm gonna take light soft suede. That's dark. I can't tell them apart. And then I'm gonna color in those tops. Now you see these little swirly things right here? Um, I looked online to see what other people were doing. Some people color them, some people don't. So for this project, I'm not gonna color them. Um, for the last project, we will. All right, this is Calypso Coral. Ooh, it's so pretty. Calypso Coral, all the berries. All right, so, um, oh, also for the center of our flowers, so saffron. So, because I was worried that this is gonna take forever, I did it ahead of time. So that's what it looks like when it's done. Now, I have one week of Stella that is like empty. Well, I just squeezed that out, let's see. I'm gonna add some week of Stella. If you guys remember, and I'm gonna show you at the end, my sweet customer Chris sent me a beautiful Fond of Autumn card. I'm gonna show you on my blog. I'm gonna post it on um, Monday. Um, and she added a little bit of Wink of Stella and it just really made the card so, I don't know, something about it just really popped off the page. So I was inspired by her to do that. Okay, so there it is. Um, I find it very relaxing to sit in color this week. In fact, I colored about 60 of those pumpkins. That's why I had to open my new pumpkin pie. <laughs> um, you know, if you have a lot of coloring to do, turn on a good movie and just sit in front of the TV. And it, I just think it's so relaxing and it'll go by in no time because you're watching a movie. This week I have, well, I guess it was really last week, maybe the week before I've started re-watching The Crown since Queen Elizabeth died. I was like, I have to watch that again. I've watched it numerous times. Um, it's so good, It, but it's one of those, you guys, was that out of the frame? I'm so zoomed in now. Let's see if I can zoom back out. Oh, I did, good there. It's one of those shows that you really can't not look. You know, like I feel like I stop what I'm doing. So when you're coloring, you gotta find a show that doesn't require you to look. Cause that show has a lot of stuff that goes on with no, no, um, you know, nobody's talking there's th but there's things that you need to see that are happening if you haven't watched the crown you need to okay so for our background piece this is a um four by five and a fourth inch piece of um crumb cake and i'm gonna adhere a one inch uh almost said slice <laughs> a slice of cardstock a one inch strip of orchid oasis a one and a fourth inch strip of starry sky and then a one and a half inch strip of Night of Navy. Okay, it's too, it's longer. I do that just to make sure that I have enough. We're gonna take this stitched rectangle and we're gonna cut it out. 
we stamped that in early espresso. So let's get that. Now I told you, I kind of hinted at the beginning of this video that you're gonna have a couple of options to cut out this image. And I will tell you that I discovered this by accident. This was the very first thing that I made. I grabbed this die, not really paying attention, and I cut it out and when I did, it came apart in four pieces, almost like a puzzle. And I was like, whoa, I didn't expect that, but I really liked it. And we're gonna do that several for all three projects. But if you wanna keep it together, it also has this die where you can cut it out and you'll have just one large piece. All right, so let's use this. Let's bring over our cut and emboss machine. Let me get all of this stuff out of the way. And we're gonna line this up. So beautiful. That I, I know you guys can't see the wink of Stella, but my gosh, it just makes it, I don't know, it just makes it so pretty. All right, so see how when I pull this up, these are like little puzzle pieces. You end up having four pieces, okay? Again, I didn't mean to do that, but it worked out just fine. All right, now we'll cut this one. Um, also, this banner image, when I first stamped it, I thought something was wrong with my stamp. It has some little breaking points there in the line. I'll show you in just a sec. But it actually is designed to do that when I looked closer at it. Um, it the artist, whoever designed this stamp, designed it to have these little like dots. That one's a little dot, that one's a dash. All right, so don't think anything's wrong with your stamp. It's just artistic, artistically designed like that. All right, now I'm gonna put my um, die so that I'm only gonna have about three-fourths of that one-inch section over there. I wanted more crumb cake than I did Orchid Oasis. Now this, the stitch rectangles, are not so there's some of our more what's the word persnickety dies okay because there's a lot of little stitching so run it through a couple of times because it's going through several layers of cardstock all right and see this one not quite how it should be yeah there we go okay sometimes it needs a little help and like i showed you guys did i show you no no i'm going to show you in the next project you can turn, when you when you have an intricate die, you can turn it face up. I'll show you that in the next project. All right, so now let's get our little puzzle pieces and some dimensionals. And we'll start with our acorns. <laughs> Judy, kind of like me, I need to keep it together, but things fall apart. Daily, I agree, daily with me, Judy daily. Uh, all right, now the little flowers. Let's see, I think that this may need to go over a little bit like that. We'll kind of overlap. And then we'll take our berries and tuck them in here. And then our other berries, we're going to do up here. Aren't those just beautiful with a blue background? I think it really makes it pop. All right, now our little our little banner can go like that. Now, all you have to do is put this on a crumb cake card base. I need some more dimensionals. Oh, why? Why do I have like five sheets of many dimensionals? One sheet of many dimensionals will last you a really, really long time. You don't need five sheets sitting at your desk. The many dimensionals go a long way. All right. Put that right there on a crumb cake card base. And then we're just going to add a few of these iridescent rhinestones. Iridescent is a hard word for me to spell. I don't know about you guys. I've told you guys I'm the world's worst speller. Iridescent, 
<laughs> I had to type it like six times this week. It was difficult for me. All right, there we go. Your iridescent rhinestones. Isn't that beautiful? And you know, again, it's called Fond of Autumn, but I have seen so many people stamping it in spring colors. So it doesn't have to be a fall card. All right, I've lost my tray. Where did it go? It was right here. Okay. <laughs> oh, you guys, I lost a die. And I dug through the trash today. I dug through the recycle bin and I can't find it. I'm so upset. It's from that welcoming with warm welcome set i lost one already Urgh. makes me mad <sighs> don't be like me put your dies back all right and i and i've been better about it i don't know i don't know what happened to it i remember taking it off and measuring it because i was cutting pieces for our team event and I never made it back <sighs> all right next up Little Debbie is making an appearance today in our next project. And you know what? I this I need to cut this piece down just a little bit. Let's do that before I get started. Um, we're using everybody's favorite color, Cajun Craze. I say that sarcastically because I know some of you hate Cajun Craze, but I love it. I cut these too big. I love it in the fall. No other time but I do love it in the fall. Okay, the measurements on the on the notes are right. I just had cut it wrong. When I did my other recording, I realized that. Okay, so inside are your fall party cakes. They have jack-o'-lanterns on them, but whatever. This is a fall project, all right? They're called fall party cakes, not Halloween party cakes. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna do some water coloring this time. So you're gonna need your water painter and you're gonna need some paper towels. We're gonna need stays on this time because if you try to use memento um, and watercolor, you're gonna have a mess. So use the stays on, okay? We're gonna use watercolor paper and our Stamparatus again. Let's see, do I need to clean my stamp? Let's see, Let's see if it leaves a mark. It does, so I need to clean it. Okay, let me get my freshly washed, freshly washed chamois. It may not look freshly washed, but it is. All right, so let's put this watercolor paper right here. You can also use our shimmer white paper. That will work just as well. And I'm gonna stamp it again in stays on. Now stays on and photopolymer, I feel like do kind of a weird thing. It kind of is a little bit stickier. So, and I should have put that other magnet on the paper and I did not. So let's hope that this, well, it's not going to. Let's see if I can get it to stay down. I didn't put my other magnet. It's a lot stickier. I just don't want to pull my paper up. Well, I did pull it up, so that's that's going to be that. I wanted to ink it again and lay it back down, but it moved. All right, you're also going to need to stamp this little flower. And Did I leave room? Mm, you think I have room right there? Yeah, you know why? Because we're only going to use the center of this image. So really, I didn't even need to stamp all that. All right, so water painters. Your pack of water painters, um, you're gonna get three. You could tell mine are well loved. You are gonna need the skinny one, all right? Boy, my dogs are going crazy in the backyard. I hope it's not a skunk. We'll know soon, won't we? <laughs> all right, I got some old olive ink here on my block. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Um, my first project, this one, I went way too dark. Like way, way too dark. So then this one I did a little bit better. All right. So you want to dilute your old olive because it's a dark color. All right. Really kind of put some water in there. 
And then we're gonna paint the leaves. I wanna start light so that I can come in and put in some dark, lay down some more dark color there um, with the veining. So just, you can squeeze it, get some more water on there. Um, if you don't like using a water painter, because it's a little bit less, you have a little bit less control when, you when you're working with water. But you can get the same effect with a blender pen. Um, I hardly ever use blender pens because I love water painters so much. But a blender pen is like a marker tip and has a solvent inside. And it will behave a similarly. You can use it in the same way. You're not going to get quite the watery look. Um, but you can use the ink and color like this. Um, and it'll be similar. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna paint all of our leaves. Um, now we're just gonna use that middle section, okay? So I'm not gonna do any of the other leaves. Um, I do need to do this leaf right here because we are gonna cut out this individual flower. Now I said I wanted to lay down a little bit more dark color. So I'm grabbing, ooh, that was really dark. So I'm grabbing some of that color there on the edge of my block. I feel like I put too much down, so let's do this. Boop, and let's try again. Mm, there we go, I think that's okay. I still wanna see some variation in the color. And watercolor is not as nice and neat as Stampin' Blends, okay? So don't expect it to be. I'm standing up too. I don't do very well standing up. All right. Now, run your water painter clean. And we're going to use a little bit of saffron. Put a little, oops, see, I haven't run it clean enough. Look at that. Come on, come on. All oh, that green is hiding in there. All right, let's get a little bit of this saffron for our flower. Okay, that's easier to get off. Then we'll use um, early espresso for acorns. Really, crumb cake would probably be better but we'll make early espresso work. Just dilute it a lot, okay? Get your acorn, gosh, that was a lot of water. And, and you know what, you're gonna barely see these acorns, so don't, don't worry too much about them. All right, now a little bit of Cajun Craze for the middle. Dang it, I just did it again. I've run out of water in my, in my brush. For the middle of our flower. And then last but not least, I'm gonna bring in a little more of, of our um, old olive and I'm gonna kind of fill in some of this color right here. just to make it a little like there's more foliage back there. You don't have to do this, but I'm doing it. All right, there we go. We're gonna let that dry, not my best work. <laughs> Hope my mom's not watching, not my best work. But you know what? Water coloring is not as neat as blends. I think that's why I prefer stamp and blends because they're more, nice and neat. Let me get this out of the way before we spill it. And we're gonna set that aside to dry. Let's make our box and get all of this out of the way. And you're gonna use soft suede. The measurements are right here at the bottom of today's um, PDF. And I'll get my Simply Scored. This is eight 
by seven and three fourths. It's almost a square. So pay real close attention to which side you're using, okay? Because it does matter. On the eight inch side, we're gonna score it at half an inch, three inches, four and a fourth, and six and three fourths. And then turn it and score it at one and a fourth and six and a half. Okay, grab your bone folder. <laughs> Yvonne, you know what it does? She says, I'm not patient enough to watercolor. It does take time and I will find sometimes when I sit down to do it, I'm like, gosh, this took me a long time because I, I feel like I have to do two or three of them to get one just right. It does take some time, I agree. All right, so you've got this skinny edge right here and you're gonna cut off those little corners and then cut that center tab at an angle. All right, and then cut each of these up the center to that score line. All right, I believe I've got tear and tape. Gosh, it's kind of gloomy and dark outside. I wish it was cool. We haven't had it like a cloudy day in a really long time. Seems very weird. Have you guys, I bet some of you have cold weather now, don't you? So strange, we're still in the 90s. I'm wearing shorts and a tank top today. All right, so <clears throat> you adhere that tab behind the opposite side. And that's gonna be your back edge right there where that paper is. We're gonna keep that at the back. So fold in the sides, then fold in the back. And last, you'll fold in that front flap so that you'll have those rounded edges all in the front. Okay, and there's your box. Slide in your full cakes. <laughs> and same thing, sides, back, and then front. I'm not gonna adhere that because I don't want the person that I give it to to rip into it, to open it. I want them to be able to save it and display it on their shelf. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it unglued, unadhered, and we're going to tie it closed with just a piece of this natural finish ribbon. And this ribbon's really thick, really wide, so I feel like a bow would be too big. So I'm just going to do a knot like that, and then I'm going to take my scissors and cut that at an angle. All right, so there's your box. Now, there's this really cool die in here. And if you go and search Fond of Autumn, you will see some people have done some really, really cool things with this die. Um, we're going to create a tone on tone little background right here. So we're not gonna use this. We're not cutting out the shape. We're just gonna cut it out of our Cajun Craze cardstock. If I haven't lost my Cajun Craze cardstock. Remember, I just trimmed it down. Where did it go? Here it is. Um, let's do this first. All right, so I was mentioning before, if you have an intricate die and you run it through and all the little doodads are like still hanging on, it's hard to get them out, you should try turning your die over like this and have your cardstock on the top. This makes a huge difference. Um, I, I, th I think it's because the bottom stays completely straight when you're rolling it through. It gives better pressure, but turning it upside down is gonna make those things just fall right out. Look at that. I mean, it's it makes a huge, huge difference. So then, if you have any of those little doodads hanging on, just get your, take your pick tool with your die brush attachment and roll them all out. All right, that little foam mat will come with your die brush attachment. All right, let's see, are we dry? We're dry enough. All right, we're gonna cut this out, just the center part, and then we'll cut out that flower. They're really close. 
really what I should have done is just move the stamp down and stamp the top half. Mm, that's not straight. My flower may be, may have a little divot out of it because they're so close. All right, so we're gonna use that piece. These other things, you could use them for other things if you wanted. Oops, I just threw the whole thing away. <laughs> I wanna keep that part. The little flower has its own. Um, Elaine says, I always forget to turn this upside down. I do too, so then I have to do a second piece. I do it all the time. All right, and there is our flower. All right, now for this, we're gonna take some liquid glue. And we're gonna adhere this, go easy on your glue, where it's gonna make a mess. And we're gonna adhere it to another piece of Cajun Craze that is exactly the same size. All right, we need to squish it down for just a minute. And it just kind of creates this textured piece. I think that's just really pretty. All right, now grab your box. I was like, where's my box? <laughs> where's the box that we just made? And we're gonna adhere it. Put your dimensionals on either side of your ribbon and that goes right there. Isn't that pretty? Just that alone. That's what people are doing if you look online. People are making cards just like that and it's just gorgeous. You can do a um, different um, color underneath if you want. Give it some contrast but I really like that tone on tone look. My fingernails, Cajun craze. Did you see? My mom, I don't know if she's on here, but she said, I love your nails, except for that orange one. <laughs> Thanks, mom. Leave it to moms, man. They're, they'll tell you the truth. My girls know it too. They don't like it when I tell them the truth. And I say, hey, if I'm not going to tell you the truth, nobody is. And then you'll be walking around, you know, wearing whatever that I told you looked ridiculous. Although what I think is ridiculous these days is not what they think is ridiculous. When is this, this um, trend of the giant baggy clothes gonna go out of style, you guys? My girls walk around like homeless people with just giant clothes that don't fit them. I'm like, you guys, you have clothes that fit. Calm down, put your regular clothes on. I don't know, that's the style. Their cute little figures are all fit and in shape, but walking around in extra large jeans, extra large shirts. <laughs> they don't want to hear it from me. Apparently, I don't know. I don't know what, what style is. I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. All right, put your flower right there. And last but not least, let's grab some linen thread. Wouldn't be a Facebook Friday without linen thread. I folded a piece in half, so we have two pieces that I'm just, you know, treating as one, but that way we have a fuller bow. Last week, my oldest daughter was home from school and she came downstairs for church and she said, what did she say? She had she had new clothes on, and I it was something that we had we had ordered some stuff from Old Navy. Had been in her room. She said so. She had it on, and she said, "Do you like my?" And I can't remember what I thought she said. I thought she said, "Mom clothes" or something. Grandma clothes. I can't remember. And I was like, "Yeah." And then she was all like looking at me, and then she said, "My new clothes," and I was like, "Oh." 
I thought she was making a joke about the clothes and she wasn't. <laughs> and then I had insulted her clothes by my reaction. Oops, I could have I could have recovered from that, you guys. It was bad. It was bad. Judy, you work in a high school. She said, I wish the girls in my high school were wearing big clothes. Oh, are they wearing too little clothes? That's what my mom keeps saying. She keeps saying it could be worse. They could be wearing teeny tiny itty bitty clothes that show everything. You're right. I know. I, you're right. You're right. All right. There are our boxes for this week. I love this box. Very fallish. Yeah, Denise. Oops. I can never say the right thing. I'm always getting in trouble. I'm always hurting their feelings, making them mad. You know, us moms, that's what we do. <laughs> that's what I do, apparently. Okay, you guys, one more project. One more. That's my favorite one this week. Oh, maybe the first one's my favorite. Or maybe this one, I don't know. I can't, I can't tell you. I can't decide. All right, now... Cindy, I believe, emailed me yesterday and said she was trying to use Fond of Autumn for table favors. Did I have any ideas? And I said, Cindy, I hope you're watching because I have projects for you tomorrow. These are so cute. These are the tiny little, they're called pretty pillow box dies, pretty pillow boxes. They look like this. And um, we're going to cut them out of craft paper and we're going to do the same thing. I, so you don't have to watch me color again. I've already colored it this time with Stampin' Blends. This time I used Blackberry Bliss and I did outline the little swirls, okay? So we're gonna cut that out. Um, we have two different versions. We're just gonna make this one right here. But this one, you use both pieces. This one is for the middle, right? And then the these are Calypso flowers. Um, this is the Rustic Harvest DSP. And this is the adorable Calypso Coral Gingham Cottage designer series paper. Okay, so stamp just like we've done the last two times. Stamp it, color it with your Stampin' Blends. If you want to see exactly how I colored it, go over to YouTube and find my individual recording and you'll be able to see it from beginning to end. Okay, Are you guys all right with that? I mean, it would take me another 10 minutes to color another one. Um, you guys, bell bottoms, two little clothes, uh, leggings and t-shirt, hoodie. I guess we'll never be happy with how our teenagers dress, right? My oldest was always super cute when she was in high school. And now <laughs> she's still super cute. But she wears, she's an art major and she looks like an art major. Last week when we went to Wimberley, she was wearing some jacket, some like denim jacket that looked like it had... Remember puff paint, you guys? Remember when we would like puff paint our shirts? That's what it looked like. And I was like, what are you wearing? She was like, it's cute. It's vintage. And I was like, oh my God, it's so ugly. She got compliments all day long on that stupid jacket. She got it at a thrift store, of course. So, you know, don't ask me. I don't know. I can't figure them out. <laughs> I wouldn't. It, it just looked, I mean, it looked like it was straight from like 1989. And she loved it. Too funny. I, whatever. She's cute. She can pull it off. If I wore it, people would be like, oh my gosh. Okay, back to what we're doing. Pretty pillow box cut in craft paper. Craft paper behaves differently than regular cardstock. It's stiffer. It doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't bend as well. It just whatever. So I kind of like to take my bone folder and show it who's boss. Okay, I'm gonna break down the fibers just a little bit. And then kind of curling it so that it'll naturally curl in where how we want it to fold. Then I'm gonna take, and, and it's hard to see those score lines for some reason on the craft paper, they're not real deep. So, so get those score lines and really spend some time getting them um, burnished. The ones that are tricky are these round ones right here. Um, so take your finger, and just go around and pinch exactly where those go, especially there in those corners. You really have to tell this thing who's boss or it will not go together. Um, if you use cardstock, I, have, I did a whole class with these last year and I did not have any trouble with them, but the, the craft paper um, really, I don't know, something about the craft paper is just a little bit more stubborn. 
All right, so make sure you see, get those bent where they're supposed to go. And then it goes like this. The back ones go on the inside. See, this guy's not bent how he's supposed to be, so he's gonna give us some trouble. And then these go like this on the outside, okay? So I'm gonna take some tear and tape. You can use liquid glue, but then I would have to really stand here for a while and hold it because it's, I don't know. It just behaves a little differently than cardstock. All right, so now remove the backing. And now go and just really put it where it's supposed to go and press down. Don't expect it to just pop together like it knows what it's doing. You have to really like, you know, tell it to go where it's supposed to go. And then that just folds over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna curl that a little bit. Like that. And then it'll curl, whoops, it'll curl over. All right, so what do you guys put in, what have y'all put in your pretty pillow boxes? I know that there are candies that fit, but all I have is Halloween candy. But I also have these fall jelly bellies. So that's what I'm gonna put in mine. If you know candies that fit in here, tell us in the comments. Um, okay, let's use the um, Calypso Coral Gingham. This is um, two and a fourth by six. And we're gonna wrap it around like this. And we're gonna grab our regular just adhesive. And whoops, stay in there. Wrap that around. And then you wanna just hug the other side. You're not adhering it to that because you want it to slide. Okay, so then the person that's getting it can slide it off, get their candy out, and then display it on a shelf where everyone will say, that's so pretty, who made that? And they can tell them that it was you. All right, we're gonna use two different ribbons, this gold shimmer, and along with our natural trim. Okay, I'm gonna lay them on top of each other. And we're just gonna fold it over like this and tie the ends together with linen thread. So I'm just gonna cut that off. Now, I'm gonna grab a clothes pen because we're gonna, this is gonna be difficult. If you don't have somebody to hold it for you, you can take your reverse tweezers or your clothes pen like this Okay, pinch it like that. Grab your linen thread and tie it together. The clothespin isn't staying, it's just holding it in place for us. Okay, I'm gonna do a knot. Thanks for sharing, Suzanne, I appreciate it. All right, isn't that pretty together? That gold and that natural ribbon Beautiful. All right, so there we have it. I don't even think I need to trim those. Um, let's bring over our cut and emboss machine one more time and cut out our pre-colored image. We need to add some Wink of Stella to it too. Don't let me forget. Where are my dies? Where did they go? Are they on the other tray? They are. Get that all lined up. Um, it's on the item number for the pillow boxes. Rhonda should be on the PDF. Is it not there? Yeah, right here. Pretty pillow box dice. That number not right. Candy corn would be a good one, yeah. You could use crumb cake, sure. You could. I just love craft. It's just really kind of rustic looking. 
Now with this, you have enough to make two. And I've cut out this label. This is from the Pretty Pillow Box dies. And then Autumn Wishes. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think I loved this set until I started really playing with it. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I love this set. Now this guy, we're going to cut it in half. Okay, because it's too close together for our label. So I'm gonna um, just kind of separate it by maybe a quarter of an inch. And then we'll put some dimensionals. Actually, let's do it like this. So it's not stuck to the table. Put your dimensionals on here. This would probably be a good place to use um, foam adhesive sheet where you can cut um, one that's big enough, wide enough, and then it'll pick up both pieces like that. Okay, I think I'm gonna add this in here as well, one of these extra pieces. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a few more dimensionals so it'll stick really well to our ribbon. Wow, that's a lot. Put that right there. And there you have it. Now let's get our Wink of Stella. Add some Wink of Stella to... This Wink of Stella is running out. Is it literally empty? I have two of them sitting here. This one is bone dry. We gotta get rid of it. Throw it away, Erica, throw it away. See, that's a problem. I would just normally throw it back in the drawer and keep trying to use it. All right, and there you have it. Aren't those, wouldn't this be so pretty sitting on your plates at Thanksgiving? Or just for whenever, giving it to a friend? I love it, it's so cute. All right, good, I'm glad you like these. Hi, Betty. Oh, is this one of your favorite? Well, we're done, but you can go back and watch the recording. Tomorrow, I mean, not tomorrow, Monday. Where did I put those other projects? Monday, I'm going to share two more projects with you. Um, these are like name plates. All right. See, it's just a folded piece of um, the craft colored just the way we colored it. And then using the Alpha Best, is that what it's called? The Alpha Best bundle? to make everybody's little name. Um, let's see, where's the other one? Here's the other one. Isn't that beautiful? Th those colors, I just love them. And then here's the card that started it all. Chris sent me this card and I loved it. So, Chris, thank you. So beautiful. You guys can't see the shimmer on it, but it's beautiful. And look, see, she did, I was, I got the idea from her. She actually left all the little doodads in there which she'd have to give us some tips on how she did that. Do you use? No, that they're completely cut. I don't know. Chris, you'll have to tell us how you did that. Beautiful. All right, that is it for today. Remember, if you would like these projects sent to you for free, all you have to do is place an order between now and Monday at midnight. And next week... On Tuesday, I will cut the, the make and take kits and get them out in the mail on Wednesday or Thursday, maybe a day late this week. Uh, make sure you use the host code. Um, click the link on my blog uh, to go to, to shop online. And you can order anything you want. It doesn't have to be the things that we use today, but you will need the bundle to create your projects. Um, but if you click the link from my blog, it'll automatically add that host code in there. It should. All right. You guys have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next Friday with surprise. I don't know what we're doing. It'll be a surprise to all of us. <laughs> all right, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.